Hello everybody, Lizard for Life here, bringing guys a brand new deck profile this time around. It is Tinned Angle, which I managed to get built at Sneak Peek. I am really, really happy about that. Uh, I've been really excited about this deck, mostly because of its theming, which it's based off of the Hounds of Tindalos from Lovecraft lore. And while those who have followed my channel for any extent of time will know that I am a big Lovecraft fan. Uh, now, if this is new to you, probably... Uh, honestly, I haven't really mentioned it much in a while, but either way, uh, I really, really, really love the Lovecraft lore, and the uh, Tindangles in particular are based off of the Hounds of Tindalos, one of the more lesser known uh, creatures of the Lovecraft mythos. Uh, basically, they live within the angles of time. It doesn't make much sense, but then again, nothing really does in, it, <laughs> in that lore, and so that's where the name comes from, Tindalos Angle towns of Tindalos that live in the angles. Uh, it's really, really weird. They also have a weird triangle thing going on, but anyway, so <laughs> this deck is really, really interesting, and I can't wait to see what Konami does with it more, because I feel like that they can only really improve from here, and granted, the stuff coming out from Destruction isn't all that great, but I digress. So, let's get on a deck profile. First and foremost is I am playing the Prediction Princess build, uh, kind of, sort of. <laughs> Prediction Princesses, or at least Tarot Tray at the very, very least, I feel like is almost like borderline necessary at the moment. Uh, mostly because Tinned Angles are lacking in a few different areas, but one of the big things they're lacking is that they don't have many good ways of flipping their monsters face up and face down. Uh, Prediction Princess Tarot Tray helps out with that. You're able to... Uh, for those who don't know, Tarot Tray can uh, flip a monster face down or face up once a turn. That's a hard one to, once per turn. So if you have multiple Tarot Trays out, you can't use the effect multiple times. But what isn't a hard once per turn, and is arguably the best effect of it, is, is that during the end phase of your turn, you can special summon a foot monster from your hand or graveyard in face down defense position. So if you have multiple Tarot Trays, you get that effect multiple times. It's really, really, really good. Enables some pretty wonky combos with your other stuff, and I just absolutely love it. Now then, the next thing, starting off with the Tindangle stuff, is Tindangle Base Gardener. So Tindangle Base Gardener, he's a level 5, 0 attack, 2300 defense, and basically if you control a face down monster, you can spell summon it from your hand, and then if a monster is summoned to your opponent's uh, Ming zone that their monster points to, you can tribute him and then special summon out a uh, tin angle from your deck in either face up attack position or face down defense position. Garno is pretty useful for getting the deck rolling, but he doesn't really do much other than just sit there and wait for your opponent to do something, and even then they can just play around it pretty easily. The big thing though is, is that he's another body on board, he's a 2300 defender which is pretty nice, and then also you need him for the uh, boss monster acute Cerberus. But I digress. So, next up, arguably one of the best cards in the deck, Tindangle Intruder. So, this guy, whenever he's foot face up, you can add any Tindangle from your deck to your hand, any Tindangle card for that matter. And then, uh, once per turn, if he's in your graveyard and you special summon a monster in face down defense position, you can special summon him in face down defense position. Really, really, really good card. Combos really well with Tarot Tray. Uh, like, just such a great, fantastic card. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all that he really gets going for him. Uh, and then also you can only use each of his effects once per turn. So it kind of does suck that he's a level 6, but however, we got some cards that we can really use to capitalize off of that. I like his special summoning effect, but it's not the greatest thing in the world. It's also not the easiest thing to trigger for that matter, but still, I really, really do like it. Then we got Tindangle Angel. Uh, this card is your main starter card, I'm going to be completely honest. So it's a flip effect monster, just like most of the other ten angles. Whenever he's foot face up, you can spell summon any foot monster from your hand or graveyard, except himself, and it, while well, in face down defense position. And then if this effect was activated during your opponent's battle phase, you end the battle phase. So one of the fun things to do is to set this thing, summon out tarot tray, and then prefer we have Intruder and Graveyard. Uh, use Tarot Tray's effect during your end phase, special summon, I don't know, uh, probably a Protector from Hand or something. And then during your opponent's turn, oh yeah, and then that'll also get you an Intruder. And then during your opponent's turn, when they go into the battle phase, provided they didn't kill Tarot Tray or you had to use his effect to protect himself, uh, during the battle phase, flip over Angel, uh, special summon another monster, and then end the battle phase. Really, really good combos that you can do with some of this stuff, but it's nothing particularly amazing, which is another reason why this deck nobody's really looking forward to it, aside from Lovecraft <laughs> lovers like me. So next up, speaking of Protector, we got good old Tindangle Protector. 
Uh, 800 attack, 1600 defense. Really just missed stats, but hey, they're better than Angels. And then whenever this guy's foot face up, you can target three, up to three other face down monsters you control, flip them face up, and then if they were all 10 angles, you get to search out 10 angles from your deck to your hand up to the number of 10 angles that you flip face up. So, it's a good effect, but it really, 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 really requires a lot of setup to get going, and you just, it, it, I just really don't like how much setup you gotta put into actually getting this effect off. It really drives me nuts. But the uh, payout for setting all that up is really great. Uh, but the big thing is, is that you're not really going to be searching much because there's just not that many Tendingle cards. And yeah, I'm sure you can get all the monsters, but generally speaking, you only need like one of each to really get going. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> generally speaking, whenever you're resolving this effect, you already got everything you need. So you're just getting more that you don't really care for, probably like uh, using as virtual fodder or for trying to reestablish your board after making a cute Cerberus. So really this card is only going to get better as the archetype gets more support, but until then he's just kind of there. The only real reason why you play three of them right now is because he's one of the only non-tribute summon, uh, non-tribute requirement uh, ten dangles. And also of course he can just generate you so much advantage, but I digress. Next up, we got Triple Manju of the 10,000 Hands. We're playing a Prediction Princess build, kind of goes without saying. Uh, you just normal summon him, get out one of your ritual monsters or spells. Then I got two Tendangle Hound. I kind of felt like this guy was only needed at two. Maybe as the deck gets more support, it might be better to play more or less. I don't know. So Hound is pretty cool. He's a flip effect monster, of course, just like everybody else. He's a level 7 though, and that's what really kills him for me. Uh, so whenever he's foot face up, you can target another monster on the field. This guy gains that monster's attack power. That's a permanent gain, by the way. Really, really great for OTKs. And then you flip that monster that you targeted face down. This is really great for just being able to, you know, just reflip uh, one of your tin angles. By the way, this is the only in archetype way of reflipping or flipping face down your stuff. No joke. <laughs> and then, of course, if he dies, and I don't know why I said of course, but if he dies, you get to uh, target, sorry, if it's destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the grave, you can target a face on monster in the field, change it to face up defense position. So, again, Hound, the level 7 monster that's supposed to be helping for OTKs, is your only way of Book of Mooning and Book of Tayuing your monsters in archetype right now. That is really really stupid i don't get why konami did this now granted yes protector can also flip face uh, stuff up uh flip stuff face up which can also of course trigger more stuff but hound is the only way to do it for both things you know for book of mooning and for book of tying uh protector can only do one or the well can only do one so it just really seems weird that they did this i don't get why konami did this but oh well the main thing is that this guy's a huge beater and can just really poke for a lot of damage. And then finally for the last few monsters I got two pot of the Forbidden. This thing can count as the, well he's a level 9 so he can count as the full tribute for a tarot tray. And then also uh, whenever you foot face up you get to either draw two cards, pop all your mon all of your opponent's monsters, return all of your opponent's face, uh, sorry return all spells and traps on the field to the hand or look at your opponent's hand, pitch a card and then I think, uh, was it just pitch a card? And then shuffle, sorry, yeah shuffle one card from your hand in the deck. So he's got a bunch of different banned card effects uh, which is just really good. Uh, really great card for just drawing and disrupting your opponent. Uh, so yeah, just both stuff that this deck is severely lacking right now. Now then, moving on to the spells. We got Triple Euler Circuit, the field spell. This card, I have really mixed opinions on, but it's a pretty good field spell for the most part. So the big thing is, is that while you control three or more ten angles, your opponent cannot attack you at all. <laughs> your opponent can't attack your monsters, they can't attack you, and you don't have to worry about anything like that. I really wish this card gave a defense boost to your ten angles or something, but it doesn't. Or heck, even an attack boost would have been nice. But again, it doesn't. So then, what's the other big thing of this thing? Well, on this card during your standby phase, you can target one ten angle you control, give it to your opponent. I don't get why you can't just do that during the main phase. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can do it during your standby phase and give it to your opponent. The big thing is, is that you give your opponent your base guard now, preferably in attack position, so it can, you know, you can do a crap ton of damage to your opponent. And then you go for an OTK of acute service, and that's the big thing about it. 
Now, then this card and one of the other uh, spells in the deck, which we'll get to here in a minute, uh, grants it has a really cool effect. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish it, pitch a Tindangle, and then search out another copy of it. Really, really cool effect. I like that a lot. It makes it where you don't have to play three terraforming. Uh, although I do still play a few copies. Because this card does really help out a lot, especially since Tindangles are pretty weak overall, and this can also help troll your opponent. Um, <laughs> reminds me a lot of how the whole point of Lovecraft's work was to make was the the big fear was to make things meaningless and this card makes your opponent's monsters meaningless pretty much along with the next card Nagel's protection so my big issue with this card is that it's not searchable at the moment it doesn't have ting dangle on the name or anything uh so yeah it's really obnoxious so you gotta play three no matter what but even then, even if it was searchable, I would still play three because this card is stupid. So all ten dangles in your main monster zone cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. And then during the first damage, whenever a ten angle battles, you double that damage. And then also, if this card is in your graveyard, you can banish it, pitch a ten angle, search out another copy of itself. Really, really, really stupid good card. I can't even like express just how good this card is for this deck. Like if Tendangles ever get more support, like other than the two cards and Flames of Destruction, uh, then this card, dear lord, <laughs> I don't get why this wasn't a hollow. I mean, okay, I get why because no one really is excited for this and Konami knows it. But still, I would have loved to have seen this uh, get a hollow print like as a super or something because not only is this card just so good and it's like. The best spell trap support for this deck, but then also, you know, the freaking effect and the artwork is just oh, so awesome. Anyways, next up, three prediction ritual. Uh, kind of goes without saying, three to ritual monster, three to ritual spell. You, it's a standard ritual spell, and then if it's in your gravity, you can banish it. Starts out a prediction princess. We're only playing one, and that's tarot tray, so not the biggest thing of the graveyard effect. Uh, next up, we got two terraforming, pretty good. You know, just getting you your circuit. And then because all the spells and traps for this deck have graveyard effects, and heck, you can even send a ritual spell if you need to, uh, full spirit of good. So this card, it's full spirit for spells and traps. Just send a full, just send a spell or trap card from your deck to your grave, and so you send a Nagel's protection, banish the Nagel's protection, search out a ten, another copy of itself, banish the other circuit, search out another copy of itself. It's just really, really good. And then of course you can also send a trap card, which has a really, really good graveyard effect. It's just such a great card for this deck in general. Not in for the re less, that rest of them. One Regeki for clearing out my opponent's board so we can try and go for that OTK. Uh, one uh, Monarch Stormforth because this deck does have several high tribute monsters. Uh, and then one Book of Moon for just being able to Book of Moon either my stuff or my opponent's stuff. You know, this general disruption. And then the only Tindangle trap and name. <sighs> Two Tindangle Deline. I, I'm kind of flip-flopping between two and three of this card. I really can't decide. I don't know. I kind of want to get your guys' opinions on that. Two or three of this. So, <laughs> just so I don't muck anything up whenever I read this, here's its full effect. When you take battle damage from your opponent's attacking monster, I got three or more ten dangles in your graveyard, uh, you can destroy the attacking monster, and if you do, special when a ten dangle acute Cerberus from your extra deck. If you control all monsters in the extra monster zone, you can banish this card from your graveyard and target three ten dangles with different names in your graveyard, special on them, and face down defense position. So this card does two really good things. It <laughs> well, it does basically the same thing for both effects. You just get out of free Tindangle Acute Service. Now granted, the graveyard effect won't get you one right away, but it does get you three Tindangles, which then can get you their effects, which then can also get you a Tindangle Acute Service. My biggest issue with this card is that it doesn't say Tindangle Extra Deck Monster, and that worries me because that <laughs> really does uh, make me worry that they're only going to give us one Tindangle Extra Deck Monster. And don't get me wrong, I like Acute Service, I like his effect, I like his artwork, and all that, but he's not the best boss monster in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and he really could have been better and I just really hope that they give this deck like maybe an upgraded acute Cerberus that counts as him and like extra or something I don't know really good card but I, I, I can't decide how many copies I want to play two or three what do you guys think anyways on to the extra I'm not gonna lie pretty much the only thing that really does matter is acute Cerberus but however I have a full extra here so I can just get my general thoughts and rundown for everything because this deck doesn't really make an extra deck very very often you don't really touch your extra deck aside from acute service except every now and then whenever you absolutely need to and i'd rather have an extra deck just in case than not one so yeah uh 
Anyway, so acute Cerberus, this thing is pretty good. He needs three ten angles to go into. He has zero attack, but he becomes 3,000 if you have three or more tin eagles in your graveyard of different names. And at least one of them is base gardener, which is pretty easy to do because, well, you he needs three tin eagles to make. So just do, just summoning him fulfills his condition to get his attack up. And then he gains 600 attack for every tin angle that he points to. And then after he battles, uh, you get to summon out a tin angle token, which is pretty good. So, uh, yeah, he just pumps himself up more, he can go for an OTK. Uh, with Nagel's protection, if you have uh, at least two Tang Dangles pointed to him, and you give your opponent a base Gardna in attack position, that's an OTK right there. Uh, granted, the OTKs in this deck, especially around Cerberus, do require a bit of setup. So, he's again, he's not the best boss monster in the world, but I do like him quite a bit. Now then, onto the rest of the extra deck. This deck has quite a few level 3s, so I uh, a few generic rank 3s in here. Number 49, Fortune Tune for defense. Really great underappreciated rank 3, by the way. Uh, one good old Phantom Knights of Breaksword for pop and stuff. Uh, one Baguska, one 101, one Utopia, one Utopia Lightning. And then because Intruder is a level 6, and he's honestly the most summoned, like, uh, the high level monsters. Uh, one Dragulus, because I freaking love this card. It's a really, really good rank 6. Uh, one DDD Wave High King Caesar. This thing, I've been looking for a reason to play him. DDDs can't really use him too much. But, however, this deck can. And so what this does... It has one effect which is irrelevant for this deck because it involves dark contracts, but that's irrelevant, as I said. But the big thing is, is that uh, during your player's turn, once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell, trap, or monster effect that would summon a monster, you can detach and seize material from him, negate that material, and then destroy it. And then I think he gains the attack of the monster that would have been summoned. Uh, then, and if you do, you can make one other D. Okay, it has to make another DDD gain 1800. Okay, so not the greatest thing, but still, being able to negate any spell, trap, or monster effect that would summon a monster is really, 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 really good. Uh, very, very powerful Xyz. Uh, one can still wear Ptolemy M7, just, you know, really good rank 6. And then because I always look for a reason to play this guy, if I can, uh, number 92, uh, Hard Earth Dragon. I, I freaking love this card, okay, don't hate me, this is one of my favorite XCs. And because we got so many level 9s in here, and it does come up every now and then, this guy's pretty good. Dyson's Fear for just being able to punch directly. And then Calam- <laughs> freaking True King of all Calamities, because this thing is obnoxious as all hell. So... Again, like, as I said, really, aside from acute service, you don't make the extra deck too, too much. But you never really know. I mean, that's why I like to have a pretty good and versatile extra deck <laughs> for this deck, just in case. So, that is the deck profile. What do you guys think of Tin Dangles? Do you think they're uh, just, you know, uh, under-supported? Do you think they'll get good eventually? Do you like them? Do you hate them? What are your guys' thoughts and opinions? Do you like this deck profile? Uh, would you change anything? What's your uh, thoughts on everything? Because I do like hearing your guys' recommendations. See you all later. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Peace out. And if it's your happy and if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Uh, peace out.